Hello everyone, I'm Zendo Kern, Planning Director. Uh, joining me is Maurice Mussina, the Director of Parks and Rec. Uh, we're here doing some uh, various interviews, talk story, trying to increase our uh, outreach and communication to you know, the East Hawaii Puna District uh, regarding lava recovery. I want to get some backstory, talk about what we're doing moving forward. And through this kind of a uh, series of interviews with various directors that are involved in this, we're hoping to, again, just bring this conversation to you folks. So with that, I'd like to just start out with uh, our conversation about, you know, lava came in 2018. You folks were then tasked with, what do you do? How do you do it? So could you tell that, tell the story about the process on looking at funding, trying to get funding, what we came up with, et cetera? Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks for opportunities, I know, by the way. Um, so originally, once uh, once Ahala Nui and Isaac Holly were inundated with lava, um, we started a process with working with FEMA and Haima about, okay, how do we, number one, if we can, how do we restore, if we can restore? Number two, if we can't restore, what are alt our alternatives? Mm -hmm. um, we went from everything from uh, trying to figure out, okay, do we take out all the lava to return it to pre-existing conditions? Uh, we did an exhaust, exhaustive search uh, all the way down the coastline of Puna saying, okay, are, is there property that we could purchase mm -hmm. to basically replace a Hala Nui um, to, to the standards that it was. Our original estimates for um, removing all the lava at both places and returning to pre-existing conditions was over a billion dollars. And obviously, yeah, obviously that was not... Uh, twice, twice or by twice or <laughs> annual <laughs> county budget. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but... You know that was our first initial task was saying okay how do you how do you return it to pre pre lava conditions um, so we worked worked for months to submit that plan what it would take um, and then after that we said FEMA come back and said obviously that's not going to work mm -hmm. so we said okay what can we do to replace some replace the parks without actually taking away all the lava what would it take to basically rebuild a Hala Nui and rebuild Isaac Holly okay our estimate came to for a Hala Nui about $25 million and Isaac Holly about, about $14, $15 million to make that happen. Um, we submitted all those plans to FEMA, including you know, uh, ADA accessible routes, um, you know, swimming locations, uh, tide pools, everything that we had at a Hala Nui. Um, then FEMA came back and said, well, we can give you about 14 or 15 million for a Hala Nui, not, not what you wanted, and then about 14 or 15 for uh, Isaac Holly. So it gave us about $30 million. That's not bad. Yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, imagine what we could do with $30 million. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then so we started negotiating and started working with all the engineers at FEMA, everything to uh, like, what what will it take to do this? Um, and in Hawaii, you can't have a park without landscaping. You can't have mm -hmm. a park without this, without that. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, when you're dealing with engineers that are on the mainland who haven't come out here, they don't understand that. Mm -hmm. So. So we did intense negotiations for about, I'd say about a year, year and a half wow. with FEMA. Haima was backing us up. Haima was, was helping us as much as they could. And unfortunately, through all that, <clears throat> they came back with a figure of about $4.9 million. Wow. And so then we said, okay, <clears throat> obviously this is what we've got to deal with now. How do we promote recreation in Puna? How do we somehow try to give access to water shoreline at the only place we have left and where's that that's Isaac Holly yep. um, Pohiki is we're talking state land so Isaac Holly is what we're dealing with and that's a good distinction that there's a separation between Pohiki and Isaac Holly yep. they're they're connected we look at them basically as the same thing mm -hmm. growing up there was always been hey this is Pohiki this is Isaac Holly right. but from a uh, jurisdiction standpoint it's not right so if you can picture the area right now, as soon as you pass the parking lot and you hit the beach area, mm -hmm. uh, as soon as you start touching that sand, start touching that water, that is all state land. Mm -hmm. In the back area, we got Ponk, open, open, uh, open space yes. land. Yes, yes. And we're working with a couple of uh, groups down there for stewardship. Okay. So we're, we're working that area. But when we look at the space we have available at Isaac Holly, um, so what, what do we need down there? First thing we need is we need a water supply. Right. Sure, sure. Just before we get into that, I want to back it up a minute. So we went, you guys, you guys go through the process of, of assessing the finances and what the damage was. You get it, and at the end of the day, 
we're at four point nine million dollars. Yep. And there's obviously a disconnect with the engineers. There's obviously a disconnect with with a lava incident. I don't think it's something that FEMA deals with on a regular basis, right? And so. It's challenging because I think a lot of people get frustrated with FEMA, but at the end of the day, I feel like they've been FEMA and Hyema have been these have been good partners with us overall, but there's a disconnect with with kind of that middle level boots on the ground engineering, which is why we got the four four point nine million essentially. Right. Is that pretty accurate? Yeah, that, that's 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 spot on. So we said, okay, we got four point nine million. Where can we work at at Isaac Holly to expend this this money? and what do we need in parks and recreation to maintain our facilities uh, to the standard that is expected of our facilities. Mm -hmm. So we've got the, the boat ramp area, which is state. Then we've got the parking lot area that's right outside, the paved parking lot yep. area where we have a uh, canopy out there, or a pavilion out there. Yep. Um, and then the other area near the bathrooms is a, if you go out there you'll see it's like a, a graded area, uh, all dirt. Mm -hmm. That is for boats and trailers. Right. If if and when we can get the, the boat ramp back, the roads restored, mm -hmm. water restored down there, now we have fishermen going to be able to use yes. the, the space again. Yes. So we really, in our discussions internally, we don't want to touch that area at all because who are we hurting? We're hurting the fishing families, mm -hmm. we're hurting the fishermen because mm -hmm. where are they going to park all their boats and trailers now? So essentially that area is kind of off limits for other park uses in essence. It's there for the fishermen, it's there for that use. We have the spigots there, the fishermen would bring their boats in, they, they leave them there, they would clean them. And so you're really limited when you take that area out, you're further limited. So that leaves us with a small parking lot area. Um, and so with a small parking lot area, what can we do, you know, and uh, one of your one of your mantras is reimagining. How do we reimagine that area? Mm -hmm. And so, so, so that's what's going to be great to, to think about. What can we do? Can we create living classrooms in there? Can we create more more structure, more shade areas, without reducing the parking, and without reducing our ADA uh, accessible accessible routes and parking? Sure. And that's another good point. That any improvements you guys make, it has to be ADA accessible, right? Yep which increases the cost, which challenges certain scopes, so it limits some of the visioning, so we're going to have to be creative. Yes. And so we have the resilience action teams working on this, right? We're working with uh, Councilwoman Ashley Kirkowitz, and the plan is that you guys get a lot of the money. We're going to take, you guys are taking a portion of that that's going to go back down to Kohiki, to Isaac Hale, and they're going to go through a visioning process mm -hmm. for that, correct? And talk a little bit about that. Yes, so right now our, our current plan that we submitted, or proposal that we submitted, puts about $2.8 million down there. Okay. Um, 750000 of that would go to water restoration, uh, a standalone system, in case DPW cannot get the water line down there. Sure. All the conversations I'm hearing, it sounds like it's pretty promising that we can get water back down there. I'm doing everything in my power to get yeah. county water back down there so we can take those funds and move them into something else. So yeah. and so you know we we open up the bathrooms again. Mm -hmm. We can have the the um, the boat wash area again. Mm -hmm. Those are all positives. Yes. Um, so now we look okay with the other funds left over. What do we do? Sure. All right. So my charge in Parks and Rec as the director is okay. How do we maintain facilities? How do we maintain and keep the safety of our personnel when we're working? and how do we offer the best possible recreational experience to our island, Ohio. Mm -hmm. So we put about uh, a million four, a million five into equipment. Okay. That includes everything from boom trucks for our tree trimmers, yeah. uh, which currently we have one boom truck that is in and out of the shop. We need skid steers. One boom truck for? Tree trimmers. For, for East Hawaii? For I've, the, I've got one right now for the entire island. For the entire island, one boom truck for the entire island. There's a, there's a few parks out there, a yeah. few trees, huh? Yeah, yeah. Imagine, huh. just try to count how many coconut trees we have, how many ornamentals we have, um, and also, you know, if there's a disaster, like when um, Izell, Izell came through, uh, our crew, just like DPW's crew, were out there with every available piece of equipment we had. Sure. Um, and we were not just in parks; we were everywhere trying to help everybody out. Um, so we have a lot of equipment. Um, and it's mostly uh, heavy equipment mm -hmm. that we need for our parks and then trailers to haul that equipment. Sure. Um, we do not have a rubbish truck in Puna. 
Sure. And so what our guys are doing is they're just going, because our Puna crew handles everything from Volcano through Pahoa all the way down to KL, Mountain View, Curtis Town. Wow. And, and we need to give them something to make their jobs a little bit more efficient. Um, we don't have a dump truck. You know, sure. how, how do we, like when we take care of all this, uh, these trimming of trees and things like that, where do we do? How do we handle them? Can, sure. we, can we have two operations going on at one time? Mm. Can we be working in Kona or Hilo and at the same time not pushing off our projects in Puna for three or four months? Mm -hmm. Because now we actually have the equipment to take care of that. Mm -hmm. um, another another part that we looked at, okay, so we so we got that money for Isaac Holly, we got this for equipment, what do we have left over? Okay, what do we have left over and where else do I need it? And I need about four or five pieces of equipment at the golf course. Okay. I need a... And uh, that's the Hilo Muni? The Hilo Muni okay. golf course. Uh, put in a little bit of perspective, at Hilo Muni, we service between 60 and 80,000 people a month. I'm sorry, a year. Wow. Um, we are the busiest golf course on the entire island. Wow. Um, we are also the cheapest golf course on the island. Uh, Two-thirds of our players are senior citizens, and by, by our estimates, um, we have about 90% of the users are from East Hawaii, 10% from, from Kona side mm -hmm. in West Hawaii, and about 30% of those users are from Puna. Wow. So how do we still utilize some of these funds at a very low amount, but still maintain uh, the golf course to the standards that is expected? Sure. And so we're, we're asking for one five game mower, a few zero turn mowers, mm -hmm. which are the ones to go around the, uh, the, the roots and stuff at, mm -hmm. at Muni, and then a, uh, a hydraulic sprayer. Um, and then when we look at a couple of other parks projects mm -hmm. in Puna, we're looking at, if you look at Curtis Town Park, we have a, um, a ball field out there. Yes. And for the kids, they have basically two benches that they can sit on as they're waiting. We would like to give something for these kids that is going to be covered and it's going to be ADA accessible. Wow. So we would like to do that for those kids. Okay. Um, and then the other... It's actually quite used, too. Uh, that, yes. that I, I used to live up in that area yeah. and driving by there. There's always kids out there learning, practicing. Oh, yeah. Right. And, it's, it's, you know, and, and to add to that, uh, in March, we should... By March, we should have our... Uh, so a whole other area of uh, the recovery was uh, Pohoa District Park. Yes. Right. So we've got money. We've got the money in hand for Pohoa District Park. By March, we'll have our... Uh, contractor selected and by next December we should have all the improvements done at the park Fantastic. part of those improvements are are grading and resurfacing every one of the fields out there so when those fields are down we're gonna have to find another place for everybody to go play in uh, so creating these ADA accessible areas at Curtis Town Park is hopefully we can put some people there we can also put some people over at Mountain View Park at the ball field over there okay um, and we're working already to make that better by taking out a bunch of bamboo and everything and in, in anticipation for the four or five months it's going to take for District Park to get fixed okay and then we're gonna put a little bit uh, of money at um, the tennis courts at Shipman Park okay we have two tennis courts they are the only tennis courts in all of Puna uh, we did replace some lights out there but what, we, what we're having is we're having cracks uh, in the asphalt. Mm -hmm. And so what we want to do is we want to resurface that whole thing and, and make it better for, for all of Puna. And then uh, the last thing is we need, we were recently given um, KL Armory by the state, yes. by the DOD. Yes. Um, and so before we do anything there, we think that we can do a lot of the improvements in-house. Okay. Um, but first we have to do a hazmat assessment of the area. We got to find out where are we standing with hazmat because we don't want to send our workers into an area uh, or start start fixing areas that maybe have uh, flaking lead paint and things. Yeah, like that. we don't want to do that at all, right? So first thing we want to do is where where are all of our hazards? How can we identify them? And then what are our next steps after that? Okay. So that's how we want to utilize the funds. Um, that is my, my our proposal. And the armory is also used for a uh, shelter during emergencies too, is that correct? Or a possibility? Yeah, we actually used, uh, during lava we used the armory, KL Community Center, and uh, Pohoa District Park for uh, sheltering. Um, our original plan, we even had some, some funds set aside for improvements to, to, to the KL Community Center. Okay. But we had to, to say, okay, 
how do we put more money down to Isaac Holly, mm -hmm. and what's our best way to utilize the remaining funds? Mm -hmm. And for us, if we can actually get um, the Cal Armory up to standards, um, we're talking community meetings, we're talking um, uh, after school programs, mm -hmm. uh, boy, boys and girls club, all that stuff that we can we can have in there. Big impact very, very big impact. And that's really convenient when there's something going on that's a district-wide for Puna, because then you're coming to Kiao, which is kind of that central point, right? Because yep. sometimes if we're doing it Pahoa, it's challenging for folks from Mountain View or Curtis Town to come down. They do, because people want to be engaged in our community, mm -hmm. but having that center point there will be really, really helpful for many, many reasons. Yep, and if you look at all the kids that, you know, in Kiao right now, you know, trying to get after-school programs going, a lot of those programs are shut down because of COVID. And so what we want to do is, you know, help, help get those programs back up, mm -hmm. give the Boys and Girls Club a, a place to, mm -hmm. for our keiki. Sure. And, you know, and, and all of other recreational uses as well. Gotcha. The maintenance side of, of parks, I imagine, is, is quite large. I'm so focused on mm -hmm. planning. I do a lot of planning stuff, so I don't know the maintenance side of it. There's a significant portion of your folks' resources that go to maintenance. Is that right? Um, Yes, it sure is, and we have a budget for the entire island for maintenance of over 250 facilities of about $800,000. Um, the administration and our council members worked with us last fiscal year to bring that up from about $450,000. Wow. Deanna really helped push this along to go from $450,000 to $800,000. Wow. That is for the entire island. Wow. Right. So. What this equipment is going to do is it's going to help us maintain our, our fields, maintain our play areas, maintain everything. Um, because as you, even as we're, we're working through all this other stuff, you know, there are things that we're doing that people may not see. Like we're replacing fountains, water fountains, mm. with ADA accessible water fountains. Those little small things like that. We're fixing cracks in sidewalk. Sure. We're putting up fences. we got big pig problems. Sure. Um, and we're having those issues also at Pahoa District Park. Right? And what's the only way we can do that is fence off the whole park, which is not what we want to do. No. Um, best case scenario for us would have been that if lava wouldn't have happened, we would have continued phasing out Isaac Holly. But the area that was covered with lava was going to be the area that we were going to phase, keep on going with the phases. Yep. So now we're stuck with a very small footprint, and what do we do in this very small footprint for the people of Puna? Exactly, which then segues into this this visioning process, right? So the concept is over the say the next ninety days with the resilience action teams uh, working in conjunction with with your with your crew going through this visioning process, right? So it's it's essentially you don't know exactly how Isaac Holly is going to play out at this point in time, right? It's kind of like what does the community want? What's the community looking at? What can we do with these funds that we have to get the highest uh, value or impact? Is that is that right? Right. How do we do that while still maintaining the serviceable areas that we have? So, so those are our, that, that's, that's where we're going to use our brains. How do we do that? How do we, you know, knowing we've got this one small area, and, and again, um, you know, I know that not everybody agrees with my proposals, sure. but I was hired to do, to do that to make sure our parks are taken care of, yes. to make sure that my staff, we have about 500 staff in Parks and Rec, to make sure that, and we have 170 people in our maintenance division alone, to make sure that they have equipment that, that they can work with that's not gonna break. So for instance, when we talk about that five game mower at, um, at Hilo Muni, mm -hmm. all those parts gotta come from England to replace the one that we currently have. Okay. We want something that we can get parts from either the mainland or here because just it's just becoming unfeasible what sure. we're doing. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. And you can't, you know, grass is growing, right? Things are moving, tree, tree, everything's constant. You're dealing with a world that's constantly happening, right? Just because you don't have a part doesn't mean you can say time out, trees stop from falling or grass stop growing. You guys have to be responsive to all of this. Yeah, and you know, we have to make sure that, you know, we control the fire ends. We mm -hmm. gotta make sure that we're constantly trimming our coconut trees so that, so that Nobody gets hurt by those. Okay. We're constantly trimming all of our ornamentals to make sure that dead limbs are taken care of. Mm -hmm. um, we we just spent actually about a month at Pohoa District Park. There's a there's an area over there to where like when all the water comes down, there's just almost like a big pond that that was created mm. for that. And so we spent about a month already excavating that out so it could drain again. 
to do that, what did we do? We had to rent an ex excavator. Yep. So that's one of the other things that, that we can take care of. When we get these fields back, once we do all this at Pohua District Park, once we get all the fields back, we got to maintain these fields. Correct. When we start doing the other phases of this park, because remember, when this park was created, we got zero equipment to maintain it. We got zero personnel to run it. Mm -hmm. We had to take from all of our other resources to, to maintain this facility. And so when the other phases come, again, we're probably not going to get any more equipment to maintain those, probably not going to get any more personnel. So we've got to make do with what we can. Having this FEMA money available for, for our parks is it's a godsend for us. I can see that. I can see that. You also have a Wine Paradise Park coming up at some point in time as well, right? Which will need to be maintained. Which will be another park in the in the Puna Nexus. Yep. So I think what we're seeing a lot of park action and obviously the need for the maintenance. I think it's uh, as you said, not everybody agrees with everything that that's going on, and that's part of the process. But I do feel that being transparent and leaning into it and really trying to work. Um, towards or just just having that open dialogue is critical. So I appreciate that you know that that's what we're doing. We're opening that up. You're you're saying here's what it is. Here's what we're working through. Here's the challenges. Um, I'm hoping that people will be able to see that while they may not agree with it all, at least there's honesty, openness, and being transparent. I think that's really important. You know that that transparency. You know it it really. Um, it really is big for me, and obviously it's big for the mayor, yes. right? And, yes. and all, of our, all of the cabinet members, and it would have been a lot easier, obviously, to say, uh, yeah, trust us, we're gonna spend $4.9 million the way that you want it, right? Sure. It was not easy for me to say, I need equipment at Hilo Muni. I bet. It was not easy for me to say, I don't see a way to put $5 million in the small footprint that we have available. Sure. Right? But what do we do? We say, this is our plans, this is our justification, and with the way you guys are handling it, with uh, Councilmember Kirkwoods, mm -hmm. and making sure the community is understanding, or at least not necessarily understanding, but is informed of everything that yes. we want to do. And we don't hide anything from anyone. Correct. We don't want it to be to where it's like a couple of years from now when an audit comes through, and now it's a public knowledge of how all the money was spent. We want everybody to know what our thoughts are and my thought process behind it. And our thought processes in our maintenance division is how do we maintain these facilities at the higher standards, highest standards for all the people. Yeah, makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, you know, Mo, it's been an absolute pleasure talking with you. I'm glad that we could have this conversation. I'm hoping this will bring, you know, more insight, more knowledge to our community as we go through this process. I'm looking forward to sitting down with you again, probably the beginning of the year after the envisioning process has happened in Pohiki. We can talk about how that's looking, what's transpiring, and uh, maybe we'll do this again for a different conversation. It's been really great having you. Sounds good, man. I'm glad you guys are doing this.